So I would like to thank you all for your pre-scene. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, at the beginning, I would like to introduce myself to you. Uh, I am Mohammed Hamdan. I'm a senior. At, I study electrical engineering. I'm 20 years old. I come from Palestine, and I'm really happy to see you guys. Uh, I'm running actually an exchange program, and I really thank the people who uh, gave me the chance to come to States to share my culture and to share uh, everything about my place with you. Uh, let's start the presentation in here. In my presentation, I'm going to talk about five main elements. The first one is the political side of Palestine, about Palestine, and second one is going to be culture, dance, uh, clothing, food, and religion. Uh, at the beginning, I would like to review the uh, Palestinian anthem. I know that you got nothing from it. <laughs> <laughs> I know uh, it's. Oh, stop it! <laughs> All right. Okay, where is Palestine? This is a good question that a lot of you wonder. Where is Palestine? <laughs> Palestine. You, I've been talking about Palestine for a long time. Where is Palestine? As you can see, if I guess you know, Egypt is a very common country and I guess most of you know Egypt. So uh, from north we have Lebanon, from northeast we have Syria, west Egypt. So from the west Egypt. And from the east we have Jordan, south we have Suez Canal. And I prepared uh, a video, I recorded a video on uh, using the Google map to clarify, uh, I mean to show you the place in particular. So on Google Map, uh, you can find even my house. Hi. In this recording, I will show you how to get Palestine, Israel, and Google Map. All you have to do is to write down the word Palestine on the search bar, then hit this box. Looks familiar now. A little bit. You can see uh, yellow lines over right here. The yellow lines? I'm going to go over this line. This line in particular. particular. Which, Which is, is Palestine. Palestine. This is Palestine. And that is Egypt, Jordan, and Syria. <coughs> and upward here, we have Lebanon. If we zoom in a little bit, can you hear it? Alright. You will see a red line. 
that covers this area. This area is then called the West Bank, and this area called the Gaza Bank, which is in under Palestinian control. That's that means by now this our Palestinian land and, uh, and for now. I know this is Palestine, but under occupation, and it's at the water line. So basically, we have the Gaza Strip and the West Bank, and the rest of the land is occupied. This is Jerusalem. It's in, uh, in the West Bank. It's the capital of Palestine. And this is the Gaza Strip. So it's surrounded by this lip, uh, red line in here, and this is the occupied land. So basically now this is uh, Israeli land is considered, like uh, the, I mean the world considered this land as Israeli land. So this is Egypt, and this is the only gate, the only way to be in touch with the outer world. We cannot go anywhere. I mean, like there is no any access, or there is no way to get out of the Gaza Strip except this way, which is through Egypt. Uh, this is the city of Gaza, and this is the place where I live. Look at the population. <laughs> it's heavily populated. So uh, basically, I live in this area. What you got? <laughs> this is my house. <laughs> Uh, thanks for Google Map. <laughs> Made everything easy. Alright. Now let's go over uh, let's go back in the past. Early and modern era, Ottoman Empire. Have you ever heard of something called Ottoman Empire? You do? Cool. Oh, cool. So this is Ottoman Empire is very old, like it's uh it back to uh, 1560 to 1917. Palestinians are into the Ottoman state and administrated from Istanbul. Istanbul is in Turkey now. Do you know Turkey? So Istanbul uh, is there. So uh, Palestine was administrated from Turkey, from Istanbul. And uh, by the British ma mandate period, which is in uh, 1920 to 1948, the British mandate for Palestine comes officially into force. Nakba. This word in Arabic it's not in English. Nakba means uh, like uh, crisis or catastrophe or something like this. Very horrible thing. We call it Nakba in, in Arabic, like a horrible thing that happened to us. Uh, on May 15th, 1948, after the Brits decided to leave Palestine, the Zionists managed to form the State of Israel, which, all, which also resulted in the explosion of 700,000 Palestinians out of their homes, who, uh, who now make up uh, the 5 million refugees uh, in the refugee camps. Uh, this is Palestine. I feel look here, Palestine and Jewish land, Jewish land in 1946. Uh, the green color represents Palestine, Palestinian land, and the white represents the Jewish land. Uh, if we go over uh, 1947, Palestine became, became like this. This land for occupied by Israel, and this land for Palestinians. And we go over 1949. To 1967, this is what is Palestine now, and in that in that time, and recently 2000 to 2012, this is Palestine. This is, I mean, those uh, areas are uh, like in this and this and this area, Palestinians live now, and all the other area which was Palestine now is called Israel. Refugee camps when they left their homes. People were while people were uh, immigrating their lands. 
That was in uh, 1948. Abelstein became Ezra. Life under occupation. Our cause, uh, it's like 64 years old so far. Settlements. You know, if, we, if I go back to this area here. I mentioned this is the uh, West Bank, right? So this is the West Bank. But you can see like here uh, a white color, which represents Israel. Actually, the Israel land, this is the Israel land, Israel land, but this white color represents the settlements. The Israeli are always like their own process to build uh, settlements in West Bank as much as they, can, as they can. So large housing project, projects, cities, uh, built illegally by Israel and land conf uh, confiscated from Palestinians within West Bank, Jerusalem, and Gaza Strip. And that began as um, a means of controlling and annexing Palestinians' land occupied during the si uh, 1967 war. And severe Israeli strategic, military, and economic interests were like resulted I mean, from the settlements. And it's not all about like building settlements. The settlers violence. The settlers are bad people. I could I could say they're not maybe like if you go to the Ikubai land where Israeli lives, Israeli people maybe like they have nothing. Not all of them like they are they agree with the government. But if you go for the settlers, they hit something called Palestine, something called Palestinian. So over uh, 49 Palestinians were killed by Israeli settlers between 2000 and 2010. The UN observed 207 incidents involving settlers' violence against Palestinians in the period between September 2008 and, and March 2009. Destruction of property, stock railway, the physical attacks and trespassing, arson, land, housing, seizure and harassment. All is done by uh, settlers. settlers. Uh, this is the settlement, as you can see. Large housing. Set settlers. This is an old woman. She did nothing to, this, to those people. Look, they're just, you know, physically attacking them. And the day when a lot of human, a lot of kids was used as a shield. Those soldiers used this little boy as a shield. To protect them from what? Do you think that they, the, there are rebelers or in the West? No, there are no rebelers in West Bank. They're just some little kids throwing stones. And those soldiers have like the most qualified weapons. The right to freedom of movement provides that people are entitled to move freely within the borders of the state, to leave any country and to return to their country. But this is not in Palestine. This is everywhere except Palestine. Checkpoints. I'm going to clarify the checkpoints thing. Uh, how many times do you use the word checkpoints in your do you use it? Do you practically use the word checkpoints? I don't think so. Because you have, you have nothing to do with checkpoints. But if you're in Palestine, checkpoints like something like regular, something normal. Could you imagine like you're living in the Niskanen, and if you want to go to campus, to Meridian, there is a checkpoint in University Drive. Those people like stop you. If they want to let you go, it depends that on the mood that the soldier is in the mood, he will let you go. If he doesn't want you to, to go for nothing, you did nothing, he will just tell you just go back to Niskanen. This is in brief. So, 74% of the main routes in West Bank, like 74, can you imagine? Routes in the West Bank are controlled by checkpoints or blocked entirely. 
economic impact because of the checkpoints. I live in the Gaza Strip, and I've never been to West Bank. And guess how far is the West Bank from Gaza Strip? It's like 40 miles. Just 40 miles. And I've never been there, because, you know, because of the economic separation between the West Bank and Gaza, severe limitation on economic interaction with isolation of markets and East Jerusalem from the rest of the West Bank and a decline in investments due to uncertainty and inefficiency. Access to healthcare. Uh, we have like the worst healthcare. The Palestinian Red uh, Crescent Society has reported 112 deaths and 35 stillbirth as a, a result of preventing medical personnel and patients from crossing checkpoints. Checkpoint birth. Is that a common phrase in here? I know. Does it make sense to you? Uh, one question, is it okay? Uh, the, these checkpoints are controlled by uh, Israeli uh, settlers? Yep. Uh, no, by the soldiers. By okay, the by soldiers. Israeli yeah, soldiers. By, the, by the army and by the uh, uh, police. Okay. Okay. At least, at least, I'm talking about at least 69 women have given birth at checkpoints from September of 2000, 2000 to 2006. Uh, I mentioned this number many times, right? Because, you know, in this, uh, I mean, in, in this year, the, the second war happened, which is uh, the war of Antifada. And 35 of the newborns died. This is like a uh, cheap one. This is in West Bank. West Bank. Why is he like chickens? Literally. It's almost like a couple of inches tall. And I don't know, like, could he like hold a gun in his bag or something? Like, I, I feel like it's really stupid, like, action. Oh, I have a story with this thing. This is the only thing in Gaza so far. Uh, I mean, like, uh, recently. Because, you know, uh, Israeli occupation withdrew from Gaza Strip in 2005. So this is the only gate, or uh, this is the only checkpoint between us. Uh, this is called Ares. Uh, let's go back to uh, my Mesa process. I mean, the scholarship that I came through. I was supposed to go to Jerusalem to do the uh, visa interview, but I couldn't go there because uh, American Council asked for a permit to let me access this gate or this checkpoint, but Israeli simply they ju just suspended it. They didn't like accept it or reject it. They suspended the case. So I made my mind up and I made it through Egypt. The apartheid wall. Uh, guess how tall is this wall? Who can guess? 15 feet. 100 feet, <laughs> meters. <laughs> feet equal to uh, one meter equal two feet or something? One, one meter equals three and a half feet. Three and a half. So, uh, so it's almost like, yeah, 17, like, it's like from 20 to 25 meters. So like 16 to 80 feet. This apartheid wall constructed by Israel along and within the West Bank. Along and within the West Bank. It separated Palestinians from their homes, from their families, schools, and farms, and affected their lives in so many ways. For example, I live in a, I have my own house, and my brother has his own house. This wall separated us, so I can't see my brother anymore. Like, he lived next to me, but I can't see him because of this apartheid wall. With your brother really no, 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 I'm just giving an example. Oh. <laughs> I live in Gaza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright. Uh, it is argued that they argue behind this wall that they secured security. It's all about security. They want to secure themselves. 
I don't know from what. And it's more obvious that it's a better method for land con uh, confiscation and expansion for the settlements and colonies. So they built this thing just to expand the settlements. This is the main goal behind the apartheid hall. It's not about like security or stuff. A lot of girl just she's trying to cross uh, the apartheid wall to go to school. To exist is to mean as mean like to resist. And we're all we doing, all what we are doing is just resisting. We're struggling. We're not attacking. We're just resisting. Merry Christmas. House uh, demolitions. Israeli Committee Against uh, Demolitions estimates that some 24,813 Palestinians, stru Palestinian structures have been demolished in the occupied territories since 1967, leaving more than 7,000 people homeless, including minors. I forgot. They just, you know, demolish the houses for no reason. <coughs> Palestinian, like, a, just a kid. Pal Palestinian prisoners, over like 7,000 prisoners, are in the Israeli jails. And what is the charge? What do you think is the charge? If the, if the Israeli, like, uh, uh, activation, like, if a soldier catch you in the street, if he just catch you, in the street, he just put it in the jail for no charge. So actually, this is like very common in the West Bank, but because we don't have like any Israeli occupation in the Gaza Strip, we're safe. Uh, no, there are no any prisoners uh, from the period after 2005. But this is very common in West Bank. They're all kids. Like, Five soldiers, all are just 12 or 10 years old. Okay, and if you wanna, if you go to this uh, website, you will see the statistics. I'll let you just wonder, wonder, who are Jews and who are Israelis? There are different. Do you think there is a difference between Jews and Israelis? What do you know about Jews and what do you know about Israelis? Do you have any, any general clue or idea? Jews the religion. Yep. What? Jews the religion. Okay. Jews, uh, I mean like if you are a Jew, you are a religious guy. No, Israelis? no that means like, if you are a Jew. No, I, I think you mean like Israelis, the religion of Israelis is Jew, Jewish, Jew, no, no. Judaism? Jew is an ethnic group. Okay. Well, the significant difference. Those kids are Israelis. The reason why they're holding toys, real toys. Um, those guys are Jews. I'm going to review a video uh, for a, a Jewish priest. Okay, he, were, he was in a demonstration. Or uh, you can say, And you'll know what is the difference between the two. These people are Jews, and they're holding our flag. They are protesting against Israelis. And you'll know what the general demonstration here today. In general, we're coming out every time to Israelis. Robert the land, the killing people, all in our name, in the name of Jews, in the name of the Torah. 62 years of robbery, 62 years of killing, all in the name of the Torah, all in the name of Jewish people. And we, as real Jews, have to come out to say, no, the Torah will say, don't steal, don't kill. And 
Because, you know, this, you know, even if you watch just this video, it's like enough to clarify the truth, to show the truth behind the state of Israel. Okay, now let's go to Palestinian culture. 
We have language, dance, food, and religion, and alhamdulillah. Ham the last one doesn't make sense to you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is the mouth language, Arabic. This is me. It's ahlan wa sahlan, like welcome. Ahlan wa sahlan. And this is uh, my old university, me. And uh, Jamal Islamiya of Gaza, the Islamic University of Gaza. This is my old university. And this is my name in Arabic. <laughs> this is a uh, kind of calligraphy. I did it by my own. Dance, Palestinian dance. Let's look at the Palestinian traditional dance. Dabka, <laughs> dabka. <laughs> yeah, it's called dabka. It's different from the Arabic uh, dance because the 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 common dance in uh, the Arab in the Middle East countries is the belly dance. But this is Dabka, it's different. So I have a video here. This is a traditional car. It's called Kufiya. And you just don't want to do it with me.
Oh, this is way better than me. <laughs> no, you were awesome. Thank you. Way better. <laughs> 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 oh, never mind. I said, uh, applause. A woman applause. As you can see, we have. This is kind of open perjury. Palestinian woman. Uh, this is like kind of old fashioned that back to like 50 years old or 40. But most of our old people still wear the same clothes. Embroidery, tatris. We call it in Arabic tatris. Not tatris, because tatris is not Arabic. <laughs> it's tatris. Embroidery uh, is the most indigenous form of art in Palestine. It is a language for expression. The most common items are the cross stitch, embroidered dresses made by village women, women from natural handmade materials. If you are interested like in embroidery and you want to like have a look at it, you can visit these two sites. You can find like different kinds, different styles. Food. Food. Who's hungry? <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is uh, maqlouba in English. If we translate it tr literally, it's called upside down. It doesn't make sense, <laughs> but it's upside down translated literally in Arabic maqlouba. So uh, it's like the ingredients here. This is rice, chicken, and spice. This is all I know. <laughs> I just know how to eat. I don't know how to. Eat. <laughs> all right. And this is Msakhan, this is a very common dish. It's like a fav favorite Palestinian dish. And it's really, really delicious. If like if I we can cook together, not by myself. But if you try the Palestinian food, you'll become an addict. An addict. <laughs> really. Mm, this is falafel. Okay, this is very common thing. The falafel. Who knows falafel? Yeah. Wow. Cool. And this is food. Who's the who knows who? No one. Ah, uh, that guy, the Egyptian guy. <laughs> and this is hummus. Mm. Hummus. Yeah. Yeah. So falafel and food. You know, we usually have them for breakfast and dinner. We don't have meat and stuff like. When I go to dining center, they serve meat and pork. Come on, it's breakfast. I can't eat that. <laughs> it should be like something like, you know, like this, right? Means. So this is very common and traditional food. Some of the Palestinian. Some cuisines and stuff. I don't know. Pancakes. This is the all of these. This is the flour. Who tried it before? Cool! Wow, awesome. So this is a kind of dessert. And this is zait, means like olive oil. And this is zata, thyme. Hummus again, and this is maftul. Maftul is like, uh, we, they make it like from, from dough, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're interested too in Palestinian food, you can visit the following websites. You can find a lot of things. Now, favorite dessert. No, I miss it. I really miss it. This is math and I see you. If you try like a piece of it, you will eat the whole thing. <laughs> believe me, believe me, the last thing that I uh, that I had in Palestine was nabusiya. The, the night before I, I left was nabusiya. Nabusiya is really, really like my favorite dessert. Is it sweet or was it? It depends. Like it depends if like uh, the maker or the cook like cooks the uh, the desserts in a good way. It would be so sweet. It depends, like, but generally it's kind of sweet. 
And this is the currency. This is all old currency. We don't have this anymore. Uh, I didn't see this. Uh, it was like 1927. I wasn't born. Even my dad wasn't born. And this is what I know. The Israeli currency. This is Israeli currency. We, uh, we deal with the Israeli. This is shekel. Um, this is other stuff. <laughs> If you travel to Palestine, this is how it looks. I guess you know in the West Bank you can find such places in Gaza Strip. It's really limited, but if you go to the occupied land, it's abundant. You can see a lot of beautiful uh, places there. Palestine is very very nice place, agricultural place, and like you can find real <laughs> vegetables <laughs> and real fruits. Now, like, I went to some countries and we had, like, you know, the lemon is in this size. <laughs> what kind of lemon? <laughs> now, let's go to religion. Uh, the Palestinian population of the West Bank and Gaza Strip is 94% Muslims, and we have 6% Christians. This is an Aqsa Mosque. This is our holy mosque. This is the, this is the holy mosque. And uh, heard of the Holy Land, which is Jerusalem, home to the world, uh, three lar uh, largest religions. You know, you can find three, the three largest religions started from this place, Jerusalem. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. The old city of Jerusalem is enclosed within large stone walls. It is within these walls of the, of the old city that one can enter the command which holds the shining, alluring, golden dome of the rock, behind which stands al Aqsa Mosque, the third holiest site. So al Aqsa Mosque is the, the third holy, holiest site in the Islamic faith. And now destination for thousands of pilgrims from all over the world. This is the, the Dome of the Rock. A lot of people think that, think that this mosque is the, uh, is the Al-Aqsa Mosque, but this is not the Al-Aqsa Mosque. This is the Dome of the Rock. Al-Aqsa Mosque depends like uh, that. I don't know what it's uh, This thing is like, it's blue. It's blue. A Church of Resurrection, or Church of the Holy What's that? Sepulchre. Sepulchre, yep. From inside. And this is the walling wall for Jews. This is uh, the, all these uh, places are in Jerusalem, as I mentioned before. And this is Bethlehem, the Tibidi church where Jesus was born. Inside of the church. Now let's go to the oldest city in the world, which is Jericho. Uh, like how, how about visiting the oldest continuously inhabited city on earth? So Jericho is the oldest, oldest city. It is uh, Jericho, a peaceful town that dates back to some 10,000 years. This city, also known as Bungad, is called Ariha, Ariha in Arabic. And Eric and lies uh, 20, uh, 260 meters below sea level. Uh, the lowest city in the world. And layers of 23 civil, uh, civilization have been uncovered there. Let's go for some time here. <laughs> Palestine, twice. North Dakota. North Dakota? North Dakota? <laughs> cool. North Dakota. We have a lot of guys. <laughs> Who will be each the other? I'll be you. <laughs> so we have population area. Palestine includes Gaza Strip, West Bank, and 20, uh, 48. Yep. You're including them also the, the Israelis or not? No. 
just uh, like the, the area is like the size of Israel. Which area? The one 16,000 16, square miles. That's there. Yeah, this is the total. Yeah, I mean, like I mean, this area, area, this area, like for uh, for Gaza Strip, West Bank, and 84 lands, the occupied lands. But totally, Palestine uh, is like 27,000 uh, square kilometer. But this is like uh, this uh, this area for the uh, these places. We have like over 5.6 million people. And this is the area, like 16,875 uh, 16, square miles. This is miles. North Dakota State, 684,000 people. And we have like, wow. <laughs> we have 700, or no, it's not 700, 70, right? 7,700 square miles. Very like large area, and the Gaza Strip, where I live, we have like 1.6 million people, and the area is like 139 square miles, and Fargo City, 100, uh, 1,550 feet, and it's like 48.8 square miles. Is that right, Bob? We measured it together, right? <laughs> So uh, the entire uh, Gaza Strip is about three times the size of the city of Park. Yeah, but the people, like if you compare the population, there's not any Is it in the most populated place on Earth? No. No. Uh, yeah, maybe like uh, compared to the area. The number of people per square. Yeah, 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 per square. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Yeah. It is. Because, you know, in India, you can find it earlier. <laughs> so, Gaza City, time lapse. I'm going to share a video of, of Gaza City.
Someone asked me to actually have such things as that. Fargo is bigger than uh, uh, Gaza City. Maybe Fargo just like the north area. It was the north area, like north with Gaza City. I'm not sure. Or Gaza City with the uh, uh, with the uh, Khan Yunus. You don't know Khan Yunus. Okay. So we're almost at the end. To, want to know more about Palestine, uh, there is a book. It's called Palestine Beginner's Guide by Ismail Adam Fadil. And it's a really good book. And I recommend it for you if you want to, to know more about Palestine. Palestine. And you can find it on Amazon using this way. And it's cheap, so uh, it's not uh, expensive. So, did you figure the colors, uh, the meaning of the colors? Did you try to? I tried for like the red. What does what does it mean like? What, like? Blood. what does it imply to you? Blood. 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 Travel. Okay. What about the green one? Land. 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 Okay. What about the yeah the white one? Peace. Yeah, you got this one. <laughs> 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 okay, what about the black? Islam. Islam. No, what? Islam. What? Islam. Islam? Yeah, all, all the... All the Isl uh, no, 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 I know, I know. Are? Yeah, I know, but it's not... That's not all, all the countries got the ah. black in there. No, no, it's not. It's not. Most countries got black. Yeah, actually, you know, there are different meanings for the colors, but here, it's injustice and oppression. And this is sacrifice, and prosperity, prosperity, and hope, and finally, the one you got it, peace. Thank you so much for your. Are you planning to visit Palestine sometime? For free. For free. Stay at your house. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, what else? I would be like, I would be like, uh, so please. I'm wondering how come uh, the cultures, uh, like, you know, Palestinian culture, in general, Arabic cultures, why aren't they represented in NDC? Why they are presented? Yeah, there uh, is there some kind of club that, that you guys are going to be in? No, he uh, just spoke to an RA, uh, and that's something that we kind of. Oh, like uh, actually, I'm going to do this. Presentation. I'm gonna like add some stuff in it. I'm gonna uh, do it again for the whole university in the international week. It's gonna be like next spring. Uh, actually, it's not like it's like so a large. So there's an Arab student association. Yeah, there's an Arab student association, and uh, we, you know this association. Uh, this association, we got we you know the goal of this association is to share the Arab culture. But not about Palestine. It's about the all Arab com countries. Because, uh, because in a, uh, you know, I have a friend. She's from the Tunisia, and she has a completely different culture. And the three over there, they're from <laughs> Egypt, and they have different, different culture. So in this club, we're sharing our culture, and as well as we'll teach, we will be teaching Arabic for free, not like as a like credit or something you know, that you have to pay for. So we're gonna deliver courses in Arabic, 
and uh, we'll share the uh, Arab culture in different uh, sites. So once we like we're working at now, uh, once we like uh, start the club, we'll let you know. And if you are interested to join us, uh, I'll I'll just find a way like to let you know about it, and you just give me a feedback if you're interested. We'll, Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh sure, because all food is for free. Well, no, yeah. The most common thing here is for you. For everything. Sure. Maybe that's bad. Uh, do you have any questions? Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you.